Hey everybody, welcome to Money's No Object. I'm your host, Dylan Howell. This is episode number 131 of our YouTube channel and podcast, and I cannot be more excited to continue sharing with you guys personal finance topics that I think could be useful for you in your long-term financial journey. Today, we will be talking about procrastinating with your personal finances. Uh, and we all know that in all different parts of our lives uh, that procrastination can be so, so dangerous uh, to our ability to get ahead, to our ability to do the things that we need to do correctly. Uh, and it is no different in our personal financial lives. And so I'm gonna talk about some ways uh, that we tend to procrastinate, uh, the causes of that procrastination, and then why uh, we should not uh, be letting this procrastination sink into our lives, uh, especially in such a critical place like our personal finances. Before we get started, though, if you could go down below, hit the big red subscribe button, like this video, leave me any feedback in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to respond to anything you leave down there. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify podcast, then just be sure to subscribe and leave me a review on either one of those platforms. Follow me on social media at MNO with Dylan, and that's really good supplementary materials to all the things I'm putting out in these long form episodes on YouTube and the podcast every single day. And then if you want somebody to help you walk through your financial life, create a plan for you, and keep you accountable to that plan over the long term, I can help you to do that. Just go to my website, www.mnowithdylan.com. Click on the Work With Dylan tab, and you can choose the financial coaching session type that would work best for you, and we can begin pushing towards your long-term financial goals together. Now, let's just be honest. A lot of us have uh, bad procrastination problems. A lot of us have a problem with doing things at the very last minute. Uh, or waiting until you absolutely can't wait any longer uh, to do something. And we know that in a lot of cases, that is holding us back. That holds us back from doing the absolute best we can. Uh, if you procrastinate in school, uh, then you're likely not going to put the best effort into whatever assignment you had procrastinated on uh, or whatever it may have been. Or if you uh, you know, procrastinate uh, to do your chores, then uh, obviously you probably just halfway did everything in order to just get it done. Uh, procrastination leads us to just trying to get things over with uh, and not actually doing things to the absolute best of our abilities. And with our personal finances, uh, it is no different. If we procrastinate, we are just going to try to get by. Uh, we're not going to do things to the absolute best of our abilities. And that is a place in our lives that we do not want to. Uh, to waste the opportunity to do our absolute best because doing our best can mean a lot of great things for our future uh, and not doing our best can leave us really wondering, hey, what if I had actually tried? What if I had actually started earlier? What if uh, I had done all of the right things in all of the right order uh, and followed a plan for my financial life? And so we don't want to be left uh, with that feeling of what if. We don't want to be left uh, with the feeling that we could have done more. And so we're going to try to address that uh, in today's episode. We're going to try to address uh, this feeling that we all have that we can wait, uh, that we have time, that we can do things later, uh, and maybe even debunk the fact uh, that you have time. Maybe you don't have the time that you think you have, uh, and we'll talk about that uh, as we move forward. But first, let's talk uh, about what some causes of uh, being a procrastinator are. And so some of the most common reasons uh, for procrastination include uh, perfectionism, so wanting to do everything exactly perfectly right. Uh, you fear failure, uh, and so in fearing uh, that you, know, you won't do well at all, you don't want to start, and so you start at the very last minute just to get something over with. Uh, you're, you fear criticism, uh, you want to avoid a task altogether. So like doing chores, right? You want to avoid that task altogether or maybe even something, an assignment that was given at school, you want to avoid that task altogether. Uh, low self-esteem. Uh, if you don't think that you're good enough and what you put out there is good enough, then you're not going to want to start uh, at doing whatever uh, you think that it is. And then um, a tendency to self-defeat, depression. You may have trouble focusing. Uh, you may have ADHD, um, obviously you just may be a person who, uh, you know, wants the pressure of waiting until the last minute. Uh, you may be somebody who resists challenges. Uh, you may have decision fatigue. You might have difficulty defining your goals, uh, a disconnect with your future self, which I think is going to be really uh, important in today's episode because a lot 
of procrastination in our personal finances is impacting our future self. And so you have this disconnect between your current self and your future self. Therefore, you procrastinate uh, in what you are doing. And then obviously a lack of energy. If you don't have a lot of energy to get up and go and do uh, and start, then uh, you can obviously put things off for a long period of time. So those are just some of the causes of procrastination uh, that I have here. And I, I think it's important to understand uh, those causes, to understand uh, that something is actually causing you uh, to do this. Something is causing you to procrastinate and actually being able to look at that thing in the face and be able to um, you know, do the best you can to fight off those feelings of procrastination. But then the question becomes, well, in our financial lives, what are the things that we actually procrastinate about? And I'm going to start on just the ground level, right? Something that uh, I've seen a lot of people like to procrastinate about. And one of the things is paying their bills, right? A lot of people don't want to pay their bills until the very last second. Uh, they kind of have this oh crap moment uh, when it comes to paying their bills. And uh, this likely has something to do with just and not wanting to take on that task, right? They uh, don't look forward uh, to paying their bills. Who does? Who looks forward uh, to paying a bill? And so a lot of people will do so at the last minute, uh, and this can be an issue. Now, it's not an issue because you paid it at the very last minute, because uh, obviously you don't want to pay things way before they're due. That wouldn't be beneficial to you and the time value of your money. Uh, but the reason that it is dangerous to pay bills at the very last minute is because a lot of people get into that place where they, uh, you know, try to disconnect from, uh, you know, paying those bills and just remember them at the last second and pay them to get the, you know, to have the least feeling about them as possible. Uh, but if they do so, they can likely forget uh, to even pay the bill. And that can be financially dangerous, obviously, because that can impact your credit. That can impact, you know, your ability to just keep the lights and water on. It can impact your housing situation. It can impact your family uh, in a real way. So, uh, you know, we can procrastinate about paying our bills at the last minute, but it's so important to just go ahead and put those types of things at the forefront. If you want to absolutely have a calendar set, you know, reminders, notifications for yourself uh, of when exactly you want to pay things. It's okay uh, if you want to distance yourself from this just a bit uh, and not have to worry about paying bills every single day. I absolutely understand that, but there needs to be some system in place to where we do not fall behind and end up missing some type of payment. So that is the place uh, just at the ground level where we can procrastinate or put something off. Then uh, one of the biggest places uh, that we see procrastination. One of the biggest places just across the board uh, that you see procrastination is in paying off debt. Uh, people just want to make minimum payments their entire life. And that uh, is obviously going to be a detriment to your long-term financial life. Because we've talked many times about how paying off debt uh, is the easiest way to reach financial freedom, right? Being out of debt, being able to have options with your cash flow, options with the money that you do bring in uh, is going to lead you down the road towards financial freedom. And a lot of people, what they want to do uh, is just you know not pay on these debts as long as possible. And some of this may have to do uh, with their financial situation, but in a lot of instances, it does not. And uh, I will explain. Because uh, people may have the money to do what they need to do as far as paying on the debts that they need to pay on. Uh, but they refuse to... Uh, look at their future self. They refuse to connect their current self and their future self. They they refuse to say, okay, well, paying off debt today is going to impact me in the future. It is going to make me someone better in the future. I'm going to be better equipped uh, to live a financially free life in the future if I am to pay my debt off today. And therefore, they do not act in a way uh, that is putting off self-gratification in the short term. They are trying to gratify themselves in the short term. They're using their uh, money to buy the things they want to buy and uh, keep racking up more and more debt. So not only are they not paying it off, uh, they are racking up more, which is obviously another sign uh, of being a procrastinator, of procrastinating, of not wanting uh, to delay gratification for any period of time. Because uh, if you're going out to purchase a car, uh, what you're doing is you are postponing the payment on that car over time. So what do I mean? I mean, if it's a $25,000 car and you go and you finance it, uh, then you aren't buying 
the full $25,000 right then, right? You don't technically own the car at that moment. You just want to be able to drive it. You want it as a status symbol. You want it as something in your driveway uh, because you see it as a need uh, when it's absolutely not. And $25,000 is a, is a mild number relative to what most people go out and finance on a regular basis. And so not only are we procrastinating when it comes to paying off debt because we don't want to pay it off, we're also procrastinating in the way uh, of we're actually taking on new debt uh, to push and postpone uh, the payments into the future, to postpone that lump sum amount coming out uh, of your pocket at all. And this uh, is only going to be dangerous to you uh, in your financial life. And the reason that this is either delaying or picking up uh, more debt is quite obvious. First of all, you're going to end up spending more on it, right? You're going to end up spending more on whatever it is than if you would have just paid in cash and bought that thing, first and foremost. Second of all, you're going to have uh, a situation where your cash flow is being drained uh, by the things that you are purchasing. You're living above your means, and in living above your means, it's going to be a struggle to go and save money and invest money uh, and put money away for your future self. Again, this can be a disconnect between the current and the future self. And if that disconnect is you know extremely uh, pronounced, then that could be an issue uh, with you and paying off your debt uh, and really delaying gratification today uh, in order to uh, get some gratification later, to be able to drive what you want to drive later, live the life that you want to live financially later on. And most people just do not want to do that. And so they procrastinate about paying off their debt. And uh, obviously, you know my feelings on this. You know that I want you to be out of debt. You know uh, that I want you to have all of your cash flow in your uh, control and to have all of the options that you can have with the money uh, that you make. And so um, let's get out of debt, stay out of debt, uh, and not have to deal with this particular issue when it comes uh, to ways that we can procrastinate financially. Now, another way that we can procrastinate financially is not having an emergency fund, not having money in savings. We can put that off. We can think that things are more important than having some money in savings. And this can look like several different things. This can uh, start by looking like, you know, oh, well, you know, I just don't see the importance of putting money back. Uh, it's more important to me to go buy the things that I want to buy in a similar way to uh, how people procrastinate in paying off debt. People will also procrastinate on saving money into an emergency fund or having money uh, set aside. And so they may say, oh, well, you know, I would you know, rather do X, Y, Z with my money than uh, actually have it set aside for the future. So um, we don't want to delay that gratification. So we will put off uh, building up that emergency fund into some time in the future. And whether or not that time in the future ever comes, uh, we will just continue to put it off, put it off, put it off. And now we all can, can agree that this can be an extremely dangerous thing to do because uh, if you put off having an emergency fund uh, and something is to happen, uh, that is to cause you some type of um, you know, financial hardship, well, you don't have cash that you can just dip into and pay something in cash as much as that might hurt as well. But you can't just pay for something in cash and move on with your life. Uh, you have to have debt associated with your life. And we saw uh, why debt is so detrimental to you because obviously you're earning interest over time. Debt is going to become more and more uh, costly to you. You're going to pay more uh, for something than if you could have just paid for it in cash. And so in putting off having an emergency fund, you are also um, welcoming these emergencies into your life and you're welcoming them in uh, with the ability to absolutely take over your life uh, and destroy whatever type of financial strength you may have. Uh, and so procrastinating in this way is going to be extremely dangerous for us. And we don't want to uh, continue in the way of not doing these things uh, that we need to do that are fundamental to our financial strength. So paying off debt was one that is extremely important to our long-term financial strength. And so is having some savings. So is having an emergency fund. That's why those are integral parts to uh, my financial action plan. Uh, and you can check that out. Uh, where I've laid out all of the, the steps for you that you should directly take in order to get to long-term financial freedom. Uh, but when we put those things off, all we're saying is me today is more important uh, than me tomorrow. And uh, I don't discount that we need to take good care of ourselves today. I do not discount 
uh, that we need to do things that we want to do today. We need to, uh, you know, be, um, you know, living in the moment in some sense. But I also think that we have some uh, responsibility to our self of tomorrow uh, that we actually do things to take care of them, to take care of ourselves. And uh, if we are failing to do that, then we are failing to take on the actual responsibility uh, of being an adult uh, and living a good, strong, healthy financial life. Uh, because a part of a good, strong, healthy financial life uh, is the idea of delayed gratification, is uh, being able to put money away for yourself to where if things happen, uh, you can take care of them. And it is uh, being able to get debt out of your life to where you can have money uh, to do all the things that you ever dreamt of doing, uh, which also require money in your life. And if you have debt, uh, it's harder to have money uh, at the end of each month. And it's a lot easier just to fall into that cycle of going into debt time and time and time again. Another situation in which procrastination rears its ugly head uh, is retirement savings or investing at all, right? Uh, to invest for the future is 100% a place where we see people procrastinate. They put it off. They put it off. They put it off. They put it off. They say, oh, well, you know, I have time. You know, I'm only X years old. I'm only, you know, 25. I can, I can wait 10 years. I'm only, you know, 30. I can wait uh, 5, 10 years. I'm only... And, you know, 40, I'm not even close to retirement or whatever it may be, right? People want to justify why they are not doing the things they are supposed to do uh, with their money. And procrastination in this place uh, is 100% a situation where uh, you are um, just looking at your current self and you have no sense of your future self and you have no sense of responsibility towards your future self. And so you will put something like this off because you don't think that it is going to impact you that much in the future and you are disconnected from what your future may actually look like. Uh, so we need to step into that place. Obviously, we've seen to this point in this episode, uh, you need to step into that place where you can uh, look at your future self in the face and say, what would be best for you? What actions today would be best uh, for you tomorrow? And one of those actions is starting early on retirement savings and investing. And a lot of people don't want to do that. And their, their excuses are things like, oh, I don't have the money or I don't have, you know, the, the best job yet or I don't have, you know, the, the best ability to, to save for retirement. Maybe my, my boss doesn't offer a 401k with a match. You know, maybe uh, I, I just don't have these, this perfect set of circumstances. Well, guess what? We're not looking for a perfect set of circumstances. What we're looking for is just circumstances to where we can start. We can begin. We can start to build for our financial futures. And uh, if you have the ability to do so, you should absolutely be doing so because the math ends up playing out. The math of starting early versus not starting early with retirement savings 100% says the earlier you start, the better off you're going to be. So for instance, I've given this example before, and I think this would be a really strong example as to why we cannot procrastinate in this place. We cannot put off our retirement savings so far into the future, and we cannot put off any type of investing so far into the future because we believe we have time uh, or that we don't have the perfect set of circumstances today. So I ran a couple scenarios, one in which uh, an individual is saving or investing uh, for 35 years, $300 per month. And they make 10% per year within this particular scenario. Uh, and in doing so, what you end up with over that 35-year period is $1.138 million. Uh, and so that doesn't seem like a bad gig, right? You save $300 a month uh, over 35 years, uh, and you end up with over a million dollars. Uh, and that's assuming that you just stayed at $300 a month, which is uh, far less than the average new car payment in America today. Well, if you just took that same individual, and let's say that same individual put off uh, retirement savings 15 years into the future, and they only saved for 20 years. Well, in only saving for 20 years, uh, they obviously are going to be left with less money uh, than the first individual. But the question is, how much less? So let's say you waited 15 years, uh, and then you invested for 20 years into the future, so that same 35-year period, but you did not invest for the first 15 years of that 35-year period, you are only left with $227,811. So you almost come up $900,000 short of the individual that invested 
uh, for 15 more years than you did. And it's not like they invested twice as long, but they started earlier. They started early enough to start compounding their money quicker because the quicker we can get our money compounding, uh, the quicker we can get our money growing for us into the future. Because doubling $1,000 is only going to get you $2,000, but doubling $100,000 gets you to $200,000. And the, the trick of that is that those happen at the exact same pace, right? If you were to take $1,000 and invest it at 10%, it would double uh, in about seven years. But if you took $100,000 and invested it at 10%, it would also double in about seven years. And so in seven years, the person with 1,000 would have 2,000 and the person with 100,000 would have 200,000. Uh, so you see that as you start earlier, right, you can go ahead and get through uh, the growing of the small amounts of money and you can start getting to some larger and larger values that can begin to compound on one another even quicker. And the craziest part about that scenario that I ran is that not only uh, at $300 a month would that one individual come up so short, but if they wanted to get to the same amount of money as the individual uh, that only invested $300 a month and did it for 35 years, uh, they would have had to invest $1,499.92. They would have had to invest five times more money just to catch up with that individual. And they didn't even wait uh, to where they invested half as long. They invested more uh, than half the time uh, that the other individual did. Uh, but the, the fact that they did not have their money growing and compounding early on forced them into a position where they had to save so much more for the future because they didn't have time. Time was not on their side. You do not have time uh, with retirement savings. You do not have time uh, with investing. The earlier you start, the more your money can compound and the better off you will be. And so if we're putting this off, if we're procrastinating in this place, hopefully these numbers are shocking enough uh, and this situation uh, is, is telling you that, hey, if I don't, if I do not invest like I should, one, it's going to be more costly. I'm going to have to invest more money later just to get to the same place. And two, uh, if I do invest the same amount, but just for a shorter period of time, I'm going to be left with less. Uh, therefore, my future self, myself in retirement is not going to be able to live the life that I want to live. Uh, and so hopefully those reasons are enough to say, let's get on the retirement savings and investing bandwagon. And then right along with this, uh, another way that we procrastinate financially is we wait for the perfect time, right? We're looking for uh, the perfect situation in which we could start, right? We're looking for the perfect situation in which we can start budgeting. We're looking for the perfect situation to start paying off debt. We're looking for the perfect situation to save money in, a, in an emergency fund. We're looking for a perfect situation to start giving even. We're looking for a perfect situation to start investing for our future. Uh, and all of these things together uh, cannot be waited on, first of all, right? The longer you wait on these things, the more difficult your financial life is going to be uh, for yourself. But this is the perfectionism part of uh, procrastination. You want things to be perfect before you ever get started. Uh, and that can be so detrimental uh, to your long-term uh, financial journey. Not to mention, things are not going to be perfect, right? Uh, the, the first time that you put money into a retirement account, uh, you're probably not going to be making uh, the most money that you'll ever make, right? Uh, if you do things in a correct manner. And it's not going to be a perfect set of circumstances. You may not live in the place that you want to live yet. You may not uh, have as much money in your savings account as you want yet. You may not have, uh, you know, the, the spouse or the significant other that you want yet. You may not be living in the place that you want to live in yet. All of these things may not be perfect. And I promise you, not everything is going to be exactly perfect or exactly how you uh, planned that it would go. Uh, but you have to just start. You have to start somewhere in all of these places because if you put off paying off debt, like we talked about earlier, it's just going to be more costly for you. If you put off an emergency fund, uh, it can be costly to you when emergencies do occur. If you put off investing for your future, uh, then you're going to end up with less money in the future or having to spend more money just to get to the same place as the other individual who started earlier. Uh, and so, it, it, and if you put off even budgeting, if you put off even you know looking at your personal finances, then you can create such a mess for yourself uh, that you're not able uh, to clean it up in a timely manner. And so perfectionism can actually turn into quite a bit of sloppiness, right? If you if the time's not perfect to start the things that you want to start 
uh, when things are perfect, uh, then you're likely to live in a very irresponsible manner between now and that time when you think things are going to be perfect. I just promise you things are not going to be perfect. Do not wait for things to be the exact way that you want them to be before you start uh, because yourself later on uh, will not appreciate the fact that you waited that long. And not to mention, if you're actually waiting for a perfect scenario, you're not going to find it. You will not find that perfect scenario. And so you may not ever start doing whatever you want to do. Uh, and kind of to go along with this, there's a lot of people who say, oh, well, you know, once we, uh, you know, once we move, right? So maybe that's their perfect scenario, right? Oh, once we move, we'll start doing this. And then no telling how long it takes them to move. Or, uh, you know, oh, once we get this much in our bank account, we'll uh, go and try to do this, you know? And, and that, maybe you can self-sabotage in those ways, right? Maybe you can continue to put off things in those ways because if you say that that's what you're gonna do, you have control over both of those things, right? You have control over moving. And so you can move as soon as you want to or as far away as you want to, right? Or you can begin saving as quickly as you want to to get to the place where you can begin doing something or you can wait as long as you want to. You can self-sabotage and actually beat yourself down in your financial journey uh, if you allow yourself to be done that way. So do not wait, get started. The perfect scenario is not coming. And then the last thing that I wanna talk about uh, is especially with investing, people wait for the exact perfect time to get into the market, right? They wait for the perfect time to make that first investment. Well, the first thing that you need to know is that bull markets are far stronger than bear markets have ever been, right? Bull markets are longer, they tend to continue going up uh, at a much higher trajectory than any bear market ever will. And so if you're waiting for the next bear market to jump in, uh, then you might have to wait a while and you might miss out on a lot of compounding of your money between now and then. And so waiting uh, to find the perfect time to invest is very difficult. What you should do is just go ahead and start systematically putting money in and you'll put some money in when the market's good. You'll put some money in when the market's bad uh, and you will be able to compound your money, grow your money over time. Uh, because if you wait, uh, there's a high likelihood that you can end up putting your money in uh, at exactly the wrong time. Uh, so if you just systematically dollar cost average your way into the market, uh, then you can be perfectly fine and continue growing your money into the future. And not only uh, is it an issue of um, you, know, you being able to grow your money and compound your money and uh, you know not lose your money at all, it is also this issue where if you're looking for that perfect place to invest, that perfect scenario, that perfect time, uh, and you think you found it, well, you might try to find it uh, when the market is far overvalued. You may be somebody who wants to follow the herd. If everything's going great, uh, then you may want to just throw all your money in when things you know, seem like they're going great. Uh, or when things are going bad, you may be the person who says, uh -uh, I'm not going to invest when things... You may have a, a wrong view of investing in the first place. You may not understand that timing the market and investing is almost impossible. Nobody has done it over the long term uh, with a perfect record. And so you will not likely be the first. And so what you should do is just go ahead and start putting in pieces of your money over time uh, and you will be better off for doing so. Because if we procrastinate in that place, if we continue to put that off, put that off, put that off, uh, we'll end up in a similar place as to uh, putting off retirement savings or putting off uh, retirement investing at all because our money won't be growing for us. Our money will not be compounding. We will not have uh, the power of compound interest uh, right behind us, pushing us along as we go. And so we want that power behind us and we want uh, to continue being pushed along uh, by that particular power of our money growing over time. So I hope you see how dangerous it is to wait, how dangerous it is to put things off into the future, how dangerous it is uh, to not do something that is necessary in uh, your financial life. Because the longer that you put off some of the things that we talked about today, uh, the weaker and the more vulnerable your financial life is going to be moving forward. Uh, and that's not what we want. We don't want weak, vulnerable financial lives. We want strong financial lives. We want um, you guys to understand that even though you may be doing good things financially, which you absolutely could be doing, uh, there may be room for improvement. There may be room uh, to make some changes. And that doesn't mean uh, that your whole life has to get flipped on its head. It doesn't mean uh, that we're going to try to get you to a, an absolutely perfect situation because, again, perfect situations don't exist. We just want you to start. We want you to get uh, to a place where you 
want to change. You want to do something that will make a difference in your long-term financial life. Uh, and I promise that if you follow the financial action plan, you do the things that I've set out for you and you do not procrastinate in your financial life in any of those places, then you will end up in long-term financial freedom in some way, shape or form. Uh, and that's what I hope for all of you. And that was the whole point of talking about financial procrastination today. So let's just stay away from it. Let's be very proactive uh, and to continue to do things in our lives that are going to push us forward and not hold us back. So thanks for watching this video. If you could go down below, hit the big red subscribe button, like this video, leave me any feedback in the comments down below and I'll be sure to get back to you there. Uh, if you have not left something already, then go ahead and put something down there and I will get back to you. Uh, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify podcast, then make sure to subscribe and leave me a review on either one of those platforms. Follow me on social media at MNO with Dylan. And that's really good supplemental materials to all the things I'm putting out in these long form episodes every single day on YouTube and the podcast. And then if you need somebody to help you with your financial life to create a plan for you and keep you accountable to that plan, then I can do that. Just go to my website, www mnowithdylan.com. Click on the work with Dylan tab and you can choose the financial coaching session type that would work best for you. And we can begin pushing towards your long-term financial goals together. So tune in tomorrow as I talk about worrying about money uh, and how that can leave us dissatisfied uh, in the life that we want to live. So thanks for tuning into this episode of Money's No Object. I'm your host, Dylan Howell. God bless.